everyone, we've got Erin in the car today and we're teaching Erin to drive from start to finish. I hope that that's going to be really useful for you. Um, but we're going to show you this process. There's going to be some good and some bad, both from me and Erin. So um, there's no need for everyone to uh, jump on a high horse and be criticising every two seconds. This is a real life scenario. And all we're going to do, we're going to have a little drive out from here, out to a car park and get Erin started. Um, so, how old are you, Erin? Just tell everyone. 21. You're 21. How come you haven't driven before? Have you driven before? I haven't even asked you really, have I? No, I haven't. Not done a thing? No. Not done a thing. Okay. Um, why do you need to learn to drive? What's the, what's the thoughts behind it? Do you reckon? Do you reckon um, the reason? And is it just because you've got this opportunity of us teaching you? Um, you don't have to pay for your lessons. Is that um, an opportunity that's too good to miss? If it is, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, and work. And work. Okay, Sam. So yeah, um, everyone needs these uh, these licenses to get to work. Which obviously, I know what you do, Erin. It would obviously help you. All right. Um, so you've never sat behind the wheel of a car before. Once, what happened? Did you actually get the car started? Did you get it moving at all? What yeah. happened? Yeah, yeah. I crashed it. You, cra you crashed it. I didn't actually know this as well. Go on then, what happened? I thought it stopped up and I just went to Excellent. Good effort. When was this? Um, last year. Was it? Yeah. Nice job. Excellent. Was that uh, was that our Luke's car or was that um, no, it was Sean's? It was Sean's. Sean's your, Sean's your sister, isn't she? Okay. All right. So you thought it stopped automatically and it went into a bush. All right, Sam. So the the idea then um, to have I was going to say professional lessons, but you know me, I'm sometimes not really professional, but professional lessons it is pretty important. So we know what we're doing. Um, just a little bit as well. Throughout, since you've been sat in the car, you've had your knees all the way back. Those two pedals on the floor, you know about them anyway, don't you? Don't you? You know what they do. You've been in, you know, cars before that have had these dual controls. Um, just remember, keep your feet away from them. No issues whatsoever. Um, I'd just like to also say to everyone, we have checked Erin's license, and she's all legit to drive. So. All we're doing is just driving out, like I said, to a little car park and we'll get going. So I'm going to shut up for now. We're going to get to the car park and then we'll uh, we'll start again from there. Okay, so we are up near the car park. It's match day. The Blues are playing a little bit later on, so there might be a few vehicles in and around this car park. But if I was honest, they should let us in still. Um, they tend to do that with... Um, the driving school cars because they know we're not going to park in this car park and be staying in there so we still should be all right Aaron. Yeah, that's Liverpool's ground, Everton's is uh, the back of us so I'm just going to see whether they uh, let us in. So let's see what they say. Hi guys, we're not staying, we're just doing a little bit of a lesson. Yeah, that's fine. Is that okay? Cheers guys. Okay, so we're going to head off. I'm going to go and situate us down across the other side and make sure we're all okay. As you can see, we're in a nice big area. And, um, cars in here are the driving school cars already so I'm just going to stick it over here in one of these bays Erin and then we'll be set and ready to go in a sec so before you get out just tell us particularly today why it's important to um, keep hold of the door why do you think it's really important today to keep hold of the door keep hold of the door because mm, you get out it's windy because it's windy okay sound it is it's very windy um 
I've done this on one of my other videos. It's quite a strange, um, strange term, but it's it's called a Dutch reach to actually open the doors. Um, the the people who live in Holland do this because of the cyclists. They go with their opposite hand to hold the actual handle, and then they use the hand nearest to open the lock. Mm -hmm. And look at my body position as well. What do you think that encourages me to do before I actually get out of the car as well? Look. To look. Okay, so keep hold of that door. You don't have to be polite when you're um, getting out as well. Make sure you shut it over. And which way do you think would be a safer way to go around the car? The front or the back? Back. Good, good guess. Why do you think that is? Because there's no cars behind us. It's simple, isn't it? All right, so lowest risk all the time. That's something we'll be always talking about, lowest risk when uh, when we're driving. Okay, you can take your seatbelt off. And we're gonna get swapped and just sticking the seat back. All good. Okay, you don't have to do a thing. I'm just actually sticking this seat down and back so excuse the camera everyone um, okay you can take your seat belt off for now as well Aaron. it's not a problem there's a couple of other things that we're gonna do first um, we're gonna ensure that um, the the seat is sorted out now there's a thing called the cockpit drill okay um, the cockpit drill it's a way of getting our car set up and ready to drive um, how do you learn? Do you learn by pictures? Or are you alright just being told what things are? What's best for you? Yeah, told. Told? Yeah. Great. Total group of letters. D treble SM. Doors, seat, steering, seat belt mirrors. We will be making notes on this at the end and I'll send you it by email as well so you, you get to look over it. And you've also got um, my videos that you can go over things as well. So we've got D treble SM doors. We need to check the doors are shut properly. How do you think you could do that? Check Go on then. What would you do? Uh, Is that one shut? Yeah. How, what were you looking for? You're looking around the sort of like the edge of it. What are you actually looking for? The crack. The crack. Okay. I'm just going to open mine slightly. And as you can hear, it's not shut properly. I can't actually see any crack around it. So that's probably not the best way to do it. But um, can you? Hey, Martin, mine's wobbling. Yeah. Check yours for me. Okay, great. If you look in this left mirror, although it's not set up for you, can you see that the door is slightly ajar yeah. as well? Yeah. Wicked. What's yours like, your side? Shut. It's shut. Wicked. Okay, now next little thing, this little button here. Give that a press. That's central locking. Do you okay. think that locked? Well, have a look at your door locks. It didn't lock, no. did it? No. Okay. And that won't lock when one of your doors is open. Okay. But it, doesn't actually work on the boot in this car okay. okay it's just the four doors so now my door is shut properly um what's the mirror like you see it's shut see it's shut doesn't rattle now try your central locking okay all right so doors are shut we've told you how to get out of the doors and how to get um in and make sure they're shut properly so out of that d treble sm it's the first s do you remember what we said Seats. Seat, great. The seat works in all different ways. Up, down, forward and backwards. This backrest moves. Um, the head restraint we've got to work out as well. Um, and this car actually rocks the seat also. So we're going to look at all of this. We're going to deal with the height first. Um, when cars height of their seats are adjusted, um, again, I'm going to do this now. Excuse the camera, everyone. Um, the seat goes up and forward and it goes down and back. Okay. So, if you did this forward backwardsness first, and then did the height, you'd then have to change the forward backwardsness. Okay. So, for me, logical is to do the height. So, it's pretty awkward in this car. There's a handle on the right hand side of your seat. Okay. There's two. There's two, well done, well seen. It's the one at the front. Okay. okay. What you have to do is pull that handle all the way up, hold on to the steering wheel, with your left hand, 
come hold on to the steering wheel with your left hand and you've got to sort of like lift that handle all the way up and then move your hips forward and up towards the steering wheel and the seat will come with you come shove your hips up and forward you've got to move off the seat <laughs> there you go ah yeah you got it go on so sort of like scotch forward oh. there you you've got it <laughs> sound sorted now what we're after height wise is to get our eyes about middle of the windscreen so you tell me could you go a little bit higher yeah yeah, so make sure that seat's as up as much as it can. So stay on the seat, but sort of like move, sit normally, yeah, but then move the whole seat up, sort of like you scotch yourself up and forward. <laughs> so hold on to the steering wheel, lift the handle, and not, maybe that's it, good. So you sort of like lift your hips up and forward rather than pushing your hips lift up and forward. Get it? Yep. Will that seat go any higher? Have a go. <laughs> So it's gone down, so lift your lift your hips up and forward, not pushing them forward. Sit off your seat. But forward. <laughs> there you go. Good. Now can you go any further? Will the seat go any higher than that? Lift up off the seat. Yes? yes. That's as high as it'll go. Okay. Wicked. Got it? It is awkward in this car. It is. A lot of cars what you'll find is that they've got levers to pump, okay, which is much easier. Or if you're really posh, you get an Alecky seat and move that seat up electrically. All right, so we're pretty good. That seat is now as high as it'll go. Do you feel as though now that your eyes are um, near enough the middle of the window? Yeah. Near enough, aren't they? Okay, good. So we're okay with the height wise. Another thing that can affect your eyes middle of the window is this back part of the seat as well because this back part of the seat obviously moves like that if you're sat more upright your eyes are a little touch higher do you think that would suit maybe a little bit we'll try it there's a handle behind that what you do is lean off the seat lift the handle fully up and then the seat will come with you lift the handle fully up there you go now lean back whilst holding that handle up until you feel you're about right and comfy. About comfy? Where are you going to go? There. About there? Yeah. Okay, we're going to check that shortly as well. But we're pretty good. Eyes are approximately in the middle of the window. Next thing is this bottom part of the seat, and we're going to adjust it in relation to the pedals on the floor. So, underneath your left leg, right at the floor, is a handle. So, it's on the seat. Yeah, I mean, it's right down to the floor. Aaron. Yeah. Got it. Hold the steering wheel with your right hand, lift the handle up, and pull the seat forward a little bit. Good. Now try that just there, and we're trying to press your left foot on the left pedal all the way down. Good. How's you doing? That's, yeah? that's your right foot. Yeah. You say left. To the left. That's okay. That's all right. So it's, it is just your toe on the pedal, as you've got it. That's pretty good. And just push your foot all the way to the floor on that pedal, all the way down, oh, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Okay, relax it. What I was watching for is this under part of your leg. And this under part of your leg was putting pressure down on the on the actual chair, so therefore you're stretching a bit for it. So, okay. what do you need to do with your seat? Make it lower. Lower, do you think, or further forward? Further forward. Further forward. So it's that one underneath the floor, isn't it? Good. Well done. So try it again. Left foot on the left pedal. Good. Push all the way to the floor. Good. Now, if you look at your leg now, you've pressed that pedal to the floor, slight bend in it, and you're not putting excessive pressure under here to actually stretch and get to it. Okay. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. Good. You can relax your leg, and that is your seat at the correct position. Okay. Okay with that? Okay. Don't worry about the steering wheel yet. Um, do you feel as though anything um, would help with your seat and position even height wise do you feel as though your knees are maybe a little bit in the way yeah right okay it's, it's a common thing and what you'll actually need to do is move your legs and knees to those spaces outside yeah. of the steering wheel yes all right now that's something that um you ladies often um would say have problems with rightly so you get taught to sit correctly all right but what you actually need to do in the car is move your knees to these spaces either side of the steering wheel and that will actually encourage your feet to be in the correct positions on the pedals also okay now we're just going to double check this um, so with your knee in that position it is can you cover this left pedal and now push it from the floor from your knee in that position good you can can't you yeah 
good well done take your foot off it again with your other knee in that position outside the steering wheel can you put your heel on the floor and just do this if you look at my foot just find your heel position in the floor so you don't have to press these pedals but they can just rock and pivot from side to side with the middle one and the one on the right is there a heel position you could get to where your foot could just rock from one to the other so have a little look at mine again Erin all right you got the pedal in the middle I haven't got one to the right hand side yeah. okay so we're trying to get our heel in the position so you can right, cover sorry. the middle one I'm being really stupid let no, me see two right so don't look for them feel them okay all right so put the um put your okay. foot on the pedal on the left good put your right foot over the pedal in the middle now keep your heel on the floor your right foot release your pressure and let your foot fall and try and find the other pedal yeah got it well done so already you've found that looking at your pedals and your feet is more difficult than feeling them get it so is that foot in a position where you can go from brake to the accelerator or your middle pedal to the right pedal do you feel as though you can do that yeah, yeah? good well done excellent and that's the position we need so although it felt a little bit alien to you because your knees were near the steering wheel looking at it now it's okay isn't it mm -hmm. good we're fine right so the next thing that we need to do i'm just going to put my window down a tiny little bit so just for a second for us Aaron, see this button here yeah give that one little press for me fab that just turns your lackey on i'm just putting this window down just so we stop misting up um, that's all fine are you okay correct temperature yeah. don't feel as though you're hot or cold or whatever no, okay. fine okay cool so the next thing that we're going to work with is our head restraint okay if you look at your head restraint or even look at mine um it's pretty good it should be about at the top of your head and you can see my head restraint it is isn't it yeah all right where's yours yours is high. above the top so it can come down a little bit but as long as your head doesn't go underneath it it's pretty good do you feel as though your back of your head is on the main or rigid part of that head restraint yeah do you feel as though it would go underneath it or it would just no, no it wouldn't it's so it's okay do you know how to adjust these head restraints um is there like a little button that there is wicked have a little go see if you move it well done it's pretty awkward to do that isn't it yeah. easier way is actually just sit normally in your seat and slide your hands up past your ears and don't even look at it Aaron. okay there you go and yeah. now now press this button this side and then push it down as far as it needs to go good so it's actually easier not looking at it again yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah so just slide your hands past your ears so we're okay what's the head restraint for why right. go on catch your car yeah good okay so no problems we don't need to go on about that so we're okay with all of the parts of the seat apart from there's one extra little thing i'm just going to show you in this car it's not on many modern cars but i'm going to show you how it works at the front right hand corner of your seat there's another lever so look where my hand position is positioned yeah. it's about 45 degrees it's right on the corner put your hand down and feel that lever got it yeah well done what i'd like you to do with that lever now is lift it up and lean back on your seat there you go and it okay. pivots that way keep it lifted up and pivot all the way forward good let go of the lever that's where you were um what do you think that's a benefit for when you're in the car not sure no. it's actually aiding for really tall people because if you're really tall and you pivot it back you're further away from the pedals so you'd, have more room for your legs. so you'd have more room for your legs and you would also sit a little bit lower down so um if you're like six foot six that would be a good shout to do okay um do you feel as though that rocking of the seat would benefit you in any way do you think it would mm. no it wouldn't so we're better off having it as it is <coughs> excuse me coffin that's all good no problem so we're okay there um, excuse me a sec i'm always ott with my uh, hand sanitizer sorry it smells lovely as well strawberry hand sanitizer right okay um so we've got um our seat in the correct spot that's all fine but our seat and our steering wheel 
go hand in hand. So distance from the steering wheel is what we're really going to cover next. So we've done doors, we've done seat, and now we're moving on to steering wheel. Okay. Now the steering wheel position, um, we need to have enough room to move our hands round. Um, have you got any idea on a comfortable position? You tell me. Do you feel as though you're a comfortable position from that wheel? Put your hands on it. A bit close. A bit close. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so yeah, because it's quite close to you, you struggle there. Good. Do you know how the steering wheels can be adjusted? Do you know how they can be moved? No. Okay, in front of your left knee, your left knee is actually touching the lever a little bit. Okay. It's that lever. So stretch your left leg out in front of you so you've got a little bit more room. And then you can use that lever. Now, don't break a nail. They're quite stiff to come down, but just pull that lever all the way down. Good. Excellent. Now, two hands on the steering wheel and physically push it in towards the dashboard. There you go. Okay. Now you can pull it out again. Try pulling it out. Now move it down. Down? Yeah. Now move it up. So it moves in all different ways. Okay. Right with that? Yeah. So, first of all, um, move it so you can see those dials in front of you. So, move the steering wheel up or down. There you go. Do you see all of those dials in front of you? Yeah. Good. Now, take your hands off the wheel. It should just sit there. Now, without moving your shoulders, off the seat and stretching, I'd just like you to put your hands out in front of you, over the top of the wheel. Good. Um, your shoulders are a little bit forward, so just sit back in your seat. Good. Hands out in front of you without stretching, plonk them down on top of the wheel, and it should be, and it pretty much is, that fleshy part on top of the wheel. Yeah. Would you agree, or do you feel as though that steering wheel could move in or out a little bit? What do you think? Are you about right? A little bit out. A little bit out. Like, like there? Yeah. So what should you do with steering wheel? Out a little bit. Okay. So, about there? Yeah. Good. Make sure you can still see your dials. Yeah. And then lock it back into place. Wicked. So now, if you put your hands on top of the wheel and move them back and actually gently hold the wheel, it creates a slight bend in your arms. Yeah. Similar to your leg with the pedals. And now, what did you say? How did you realise that that steering wheel was maybe a little bit close to you before? I can go to the bottom. Try. It's easier. Yeah. On to it? Yeah. Any questions? So we've done the doors, we've done a seat, we've done a steering. Remember the last seat, belt. seat belt? Good. Wacky seat belt on. Super. So you're all okay. You know how to put seat belts on. Um, We'll look at a couple of other things with seat belts as well. Um, age where people are responsible for their own seat belts. Any idea what it is? Um, 13? You've near enough hit the mark. 13 is where you are still responsible. When they turn 14, they are responsible. Okay. okay. However, would you let anyone in your car without a seat belt? No. No. You're in charge, you're the chief. So if um, you're picking some of our Luke's mates up from town, yeah? yeah, and they're sat behind you, and um, someone wants to put or wants to take the lift home that you're offering without putting a seatbelt on, you imagine if you did have an accident, the weight of that body going through the back of that seat. I'm not trying to scare you, but does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So if they don't put the seatbelts on, what do you tell them? What could you do? Don't move. Don't move, good. Or tell them to get out. Get out. Perfect. You're in charge. Um, height wise as well, sometimes seat belts are adjustable here. Sometimes they have um, little uh, pinches that you pinch two buttons or a button sometimes and then that enables you to move the mounting point of the seat belt. Why do you think that would be useful? So it doesn't cut in your neck. Good. Is your seat belt cutting in your neck? No. Why do you think that then hasn't got one. Why do you think this car hasn't got a height adjust of the seat belts then? Because your car moves. No, the seat moves. Seat moves so much. Yeah, and because I've got you to adjust your seat height wise, like most people don't do, most people are lazy, they just get in. But because your eyes are at the correct level, BMW have realised that and they just put a little sort of like his little angle adjuster rather than a height adjuster. But don't forget some car manufacturers you've got these buttons that you can adjust it. If it's slipping off your shoulder, move it up. If it's cutting into your neck, move it down. Do you know where your collarbone is? Yeah. Is your seatbelt running across your collarbone? Yeah. Perfect. 
All right with that? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, is there anything else from seat belts that you think you need to know at the moment, or are we all right for that for now? Okay. We're good. So doors, seat, steering, seat belt. Do you remember what the M? Mirrors. Mirrors. Wicked. Okay. We've got loads of mirrors in this car. Which ones are yours? That one. That one. That one. Brilliant. We're going to start off with this one. Okay. okay. Um, what do we use that one for, Erin? See out the rear. See out the rear. Perfect. It's a flat glass mirror as well. Um, unlike the ones at the side, the ones at the side are like the back of a spoon. They're slightly curved or convex. Okay. Um, the fence, I don't know whether you can see it in there, even if you have to lean up to see the fence. Can you see any part of the fence through oh, yeah, the hedges? Yeah. yeah. Now have a look at the fence in your right mirror. Which right, looks yeah. further away? That one. That one. So that's like, they're the curved ones. They're like the back of a spoon. All right. Why do you think they're curved? What do you think the benefit is? So cars look further away? That wouldn't be necessarily a benefit, but it is how they appear. So you're correct with that, but do you think it would enable you to see less or more? More. More. So that's what they're curved for on the side. We're going to have a little go at adjusting this one first, Erin. Um, move the mirror so you get your best view out the top of the top and bottom of the back window, just go I for it. it. Um, you literally put your hands either side on the plastic, not on the glass. Yeah. Uh, why do you think that's the case as well? What, it's smudge it's smudges, there. yeah, okay, sound. And literally just move it, don't be scared of it. You can twist and then move it up, move it down. Good. If you're moving it down, you're probably better off doing this one way and the other to like edge Wiggle it down, it. wheel it down. There you go. Notice as well, while you're sat in that seat, that you're using both hands for it, which is okay, but then you're sitting back in your seat and you're in a totally different position. Yeah, so, nice. what I want you to do first, oh, just sorry. chill, you're all right. Look forward out the windscreen, out towards those two guys. Yeah. Two hands on the steering wheel for me, and just glance at this. Does that need adjusting? Yeah. So just move with your left hand, because your left hand can reach where your right hand, you have to move off your seat to reach. So can you just use your left hand? Put it either side, grab it like that, and just literally move it so you see the top and bottom of the back window first of all. That's better. Check, hands on the wheel, look forward, just glance with your eyes. What's that like? Yeah. Is that good? Excellent. Now, a little question for you. Um, when we're driving on the road, which side is probably more dangerous most of the time? <laughs> which side of our car? Where would people maybe overtake you? Left hand side. Do you think? Do you think people overtake on the left? Do you think on a two lane road, where do people mostly overtake? On the right. Okay. Alright. So there's a little more danger to the right hand side rather than the left. So we need to set this interior mirror slightly to what we call the offside of the car. So do you see the three head restraints in the back window? Yeah. Wicked. Can you see the one your side more or my side more? Your side. Okay, so which does that tell you? needs to be moved over that way. Go for it. So still the same sort of height, but just see the head restraint your side more than my side. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Nicely checked forward and then glanced at the mirror. Wicked. We're done with that. You alright with that? Yeah. Great. Um, side mirrors. Um, we need a lecky on to use side mirrors a lot of the time in the car, but we've already done it. Do you remember I got you to press this to turn the electric on before? Mm. All right, sound. So the electric's still on. The toggle to use the mirrors, the side mirrors, is on the door next to the electric windows. So down near the handle. There you go, you've got it. Okay, wicked. So there's a little switch underneath that that you can move to one side or the other. What do you think the uh, function of that switch is? To lock it. Actually not, no, it's to choose which mirror you wish to actually work. Oh, okay. All right with that? Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is switch that switch to the left hand side because we're going to have a look at my mirror first. Okay, so have a little go with the pad and move it, but glance across. And when you're using this mirror just on this left side, you should focus about 45 degrees out in front of you, so about where my cloth is. So face directly at my cloth and then just glance your eyes to the mirror. Why do you think that's better rather than staring fully at the mirror? See your eyes still on the road. Wicked. You face the cloth as I've explained, and can you look at the camper van up ahead? And can you look at the mirror without moving your head? Yay! Yay. Good. So that's how we're trying to generally do it. All right. So what do you think you should be doing with this mirror to to fix it? Do you think 
um, and these adjusting from what you see there do you think there's anything that you need to do Yeah. Go on, I, I can see more. I can see more out of that one than I can for that one. Okay. Um, maybe that might just be um, because what, of the bushes and hedges okay. behind us. But do you need to see any of your car? Do you think? Um, yeah. You do, yeah. Um, because if you had a boot full of um, suitcases and it was blocking your back window, or you were driving a van and you didn't have this view of your car behind you would still need to see the cars behind in this. So you can't have it set so wide that you can't see them. So you need to see a little bit of your car, probably about the width of a couple of fingers. So do you think you need to move that mirror in or out or is it about right where it is? What do you think? Out. Go on then. So use the little toggle and just move it that way a little bit. I still need to see a little bit of your car. Is that about it? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, height wise is really difficult. I'd like you to look through the hedges behind us. Yeah. And see those houses behind. Can you see through the hedges? See just the a white door. White chest. door. Great. Can you see above the top of that white door? No. No. So, that mirror, do you feel as though you could move that mirror down any and still see where the road is and the cars are? I can just see the height of the car. Brilliant. Do you feel as though it would be a little bit of a benefit to move that mirror up a touch then? Yeah, because I just couldn't see the top of that bus. Okay. Do you need to see the top of the bus though? No. Could you see the bus? Yeah. So I would only move it up a tiny little bit then, because if you struggle to see the top of the car, that's probably about as high as you need it. Okay. So anything that came past that road in the background, could you see? Yeah. Good that's about what we're doing proportion wise with these side mirrors okay? okay you don't need to see too much of your car and you don't need to see uh, any of the sky for example I know we wouldn't be able to see the sky with what's behind us but no worries so how do you operate the right hand mirror then what do you need to do with that move it back to the right okay the go there. for it well done sit and look forward and just glance with your eyes put your right hand across towards the little control pad and get the same sort of proportions with that mirror so how much of your car can you see? More than the other side. So, move it out a little bit. And then do you feel as though you can move your mirror down any and still see that road behind you? Yeah. Go on then, move it down a little bit then. Yeah, see the whole road. We're side. good, we're good. All right with that? Yeah. So we've got our mirrors set up and sorted. So, that little group of letters, D treble SM, can you remind me what they all stood for? Do. Seatbelt. Oh, close. Seat. Seat. And then we sorted steering wheel. steering wheel. Then it was the seat, seat belt belts. and then mirrors. Okay. I'll put that on your notes after, but have you got any questions with that at all? No. No? Okay, wicked. If you've got any questions at any point, always ask. But I don't feel as though I've lost you with anything there. Feel okay? Yeah. All right, good. So we're okay with the, that's what we call the cockpit drill. It takes, as you can see, a little while to explain it properly. However, once you get in the car, get it done, a couple of minutes and you'll be sorted. Okay. All right, good. So we're going to move on to the controls of the car now. What would you like to discuss first? Where, where would you like to go with this? What are you looking at? Pedals? Did yeah. you look down at the pedals? All right, yeah. so you've got three pedals on the floor. Um, dead easy way to remember this. Some people say ABC back to front. I tend to do it this way. CBA, can't be asked. So remember, can't be asked. Yeah. Clutch. What's the middle one? Brake. Brake. Accelerator. Accelerator. Brilliant. And we've also already shown you what feet are used for which pedals. So remind me. Right foot for the middle one, and the right one, and the left for left. Good. Really good. So no problems. And we've also already shown you where your feet should be on the floor. Just out of interest, have a little look. Every single pair of trainees I get, I've ruined them here. Okay. Why? Because that's where they should be on the pedal. It's where my heel is on the floor. Oh, on the floor, okay. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. So it always rocks and pivots and I ruin every single pair of trainees I ever buy. Okay. All right. But um, remember, that's a better way of doing it. It's like writing, like you're teaching the kids in school. I'm just going to grab a pen a sec. If you were writing your name, would you write your name like that? No. You'd rest your hand. Your hand. Yeah. Why? Comfort. Comfort, yeah. A little bit more control. What's the difference with your foot, Dad? Well, 
nothing. Same thing. Same thing. And that's what we're trying to get to. Okay. Okay. People often say, well, if you just move your foot, it gives you pain in your knee. A uh, load of rubbish. Um, because people tend to put their foot flat on the pedal rather than on the, the side. Good. You don't have to have your foot plumb straight with a pedal. As long as you can put your foot on it and press it, you're totally fine. And then remember what I said about your knee before, it should rock. So you, your hip does a lot of the moving from pedal to pedal, and then your ankle's there just to do the squeezing and releasing. Okay. Get where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, the accelerator pedal, I'm going to be calling it the gas. What do we use the gas pedal for? State the obvious. To move. Brilliant. Okay. Um, we also use it to slow down. Okay. Simple terms as you can. What does the gas pedal do? Pardon? Simplest terms as you can. What do you think the gas pedal does? Makes the car move. Good. It puts fuel in into the engine or fuel and air into the engine and these new electric cars it's just going to increase the power going to the engine and the wheels but don't forget as you lessen the pedal you slow down you slow down so that's usually your first port of call when you've got problems okay to actually release the accelerator okay. if you press nothing the car would just slow down gradually which is a nice way to do it that seems confusing to you yeah, you just what do you mean if you do nothing? If you just come off all the pedals. Okay. It would just slow down gradually. Would that is that a strange concept to you that you think that you would always have to be pressing the pedal? Would that be your mindset, do you think? Yeah. So yeah. I thought it would be like come off it, just stop automatically. Good. It doesn't. It slows down gradually. Okay. Okay. So that's your first port of call to see something, generally. Check your mirrors is probably the next thing. Okay. And then you come off the gas pedal okay all right and that will start slowing you down you don't always have to be pressing the pedal okay and I do find that with a lot of learners they have that perception that they've got to still always be pressing the pedal and you you don't okay. now that seems bizarre to experienced drivers but it's interesting that you've got that mindset straight from the off so just remember coming off everything actually is going to start slowing you down a lot of the time okay okay good. everything yeah come off all the pedals okay okay Right? Yeah. Sound. So, how do you use that accelerator pedal? How do you think? Do you think um, you just put your foot all the way on it straight away? Slowly. Slowly, gently. Then you make it like do something with the clutch. You do. We're going to go on to that in a second. Brilliant. Okay, yes, you do. Okay. Um, so, we're okay. We use the pedal gently, smoothly, and progressively. We're all okay. The brake pedal. Okay. Yeah? What do we use that for? State the obvious. Stop. Stop, slow down, stop. Use it in exactly the same way as your accelerator yeah, yeah. pedal. Okay. Alright? So it breaks slowly. Yes. Light okay. at first and say if you needed to brake a little bit quicker. Do it a bit. Just to go a little bit more. Probably about in thicknesses of pound coins. Think on how thick a pound coin is. Okay. So you probably start off with one thickness and then go, oh it's not quite slowing enough. Another thickness. Then another one. What if it was slowing too much? Take it off a little bit. Good. And that's all you do it. It's dead simple. All right, so you've got to be nice and relaxed to do that. One thing I'd like you to try straight from the off is when you're using the car, nice and relaxed with your hands because hands, eyes, and feet are all linked. If you grip the steering wheel too tight, you're going to be tense with your feet and you won't be able to do it. Yeah, so relax. All right, I've got these dual controls, I can stop you crashing, I can stop you getting into an accident honestly. So there's nothing that you could do that could be a problem to us apart from probably pressing the brake when I say off the brake that's the only thing I can't stop you doing okay so if I ever say off the brake to you just, just, come, off off it. just okay. come off it and let me sort it all right so we're okay with that the clutch when do we use the clutch pedal what do you use the clutch for start. to start off yeah there's four times that you use it come on any start to like if you like stopped to go again that's starting off but okay. yeah stopping you use it as well so starting off and stopping good you also use it when you're changing gear. Okay. Okay. And you also use it when you're manoeuvring. Say if you're reversing into a bay like that, black BMW is up there. Okay. All right. Any idea what the clutch does? No. I am going to get my little diagram out for this because this is a little complicated. Um, and this is the simplest way I can explain this. So. I've got my iPad out. 
and we're all okay. Um, here we go. Let's find the correct thing. So, controls, I'm just going to go use the clutch. So, this is the clutch, and it consists of two plates. Okay, when you press this clutch pedal down, these two plates come apart. Okay. And think of it as a way of transferring power from your engine through to your wheels. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the moment, because this clutch is down, and these plates are apart, how much power is getting through? None. Good. So, what would you do to feed the power back to the wheels? What would you Make do? Make them me. How would you do that? By releasing that bit. Good. If you just released it all the way up straight away, that's when you're going to cause the car problems. So you've got to feed this power in smoothly and slowly. So we lift it up to the point where these two plates just touch and that's when a little bit of the power is getting from the engine to the wheels and that's what we call the biting point that's the point where we're going to start to move the car and it's at this point where we've got to feed this power in really slowly pressing the clutch pedal down to the floor you can do quickly yeah. from the floor to the biting point you can lift it but then at the biting point when you feed in this power in it's got to be really slow and then when the power has fed in you can just lift the clutch up Pardon? when the power has fed in once you're going you can just lift the clutch up okay so you can take your foot off the clutch hmm. okay all right because it's only used to start the car then to change gear or to stop okay all right if you think if we're stopping what we would do is this is the wheels think of the wheels we would stop those wheels with the brake pedal because everything's connected what would the engine do stop stop and it would cut out and it would stall so simply all we do to stop the wheels and then keep the engine running all we simply do is just press this clutch down because it means we can then stop this side and then this can keep going because the link is broken I know it sounds pretty complicated but I don't know, have I explained that so you sort of grasp what we're talking about? yeah Yeah. we've also talked about with how we use this pedal as well so quick down, slow to feed that power in ok alright, you were going to ask a question there were you going to ask a question? no, no? just thinking just thinking, that's fine you need to think out loud, don't ever worry any question that you ask is not a silly question. Okay. Alright? You alright with that? Yeah. So pedals wise we're done. Anything else you would like to have a little talk about or, or work with? How do you use the different lights for? Lights, okay. Um, lights we don't really need today but we can explain them to you. They're on a switch on the right hand side in front of your right knee. Okay, and that switch is switched at the moment to what? What does it say where it's pointed to? A. A is for automatic. So the automatic lights will take so take care of everything that we need today. All right. It has got daytime driving lights on all the time. So honestly, Erin, for now, I would probably advise don't worry about them. Okay. All right. We'll move on to something else that we can deal with to get you moving off and stopping because that's what I want to do. I want to get you having a little drive before we finish. You okay with that? So, so we'll leave the lights if that's right with you. Um, what about this thing? Gear. Gear, okay. Have you got any idea what neutral is? Free? It's not, no, it's where it's not in a gear. Okay. Okay, and it's dead simple to check. You can do this in a sec. You can feel the springs either side. You don't have to use it with two fingers and then one finger like I'm showing you. I'm just doing that so you can see the springs. Okay. Put your hand on top. Push a little bit to my side, let go. You feel the springs? Yeah. Have a go your side as well. So there's two obvious springs either side, isn't mm -hmm. there? Okay. Now, that's where it's not in the gear. So even if we turn the car on, the car's not going to move unless we put it in the gear. Okay. From that neutral position, we can tell where all the other gears are. What I'd like you to do is press your clutch down. Try and do it with feel. Try not to look at it. Can you find it? You'll add a little look. Find it? Yeah. Press it down. All the way to the floor. All the way down. 
Good, okay. Now put your hand on top here and just push it up and forward. Good. That's third gear. So remember, third gear is above neutral. Okay. Pull it back down, all the way down, and that's fourth gear. Okay. So put it back in neutral again. Take your foot off the clutch and take your hand off the gear lever. So have a little look where the M is. Um, that's neutral. So straight up is third and straight down is fourth. Okay. Alright with that? Yeah. Press the clutch down once again. Nope. Press the clutch. Oh, the That's okay. You're alright. So press it all the way down. Did you press that quickly or did you press it slowly? Oh. Take your foot off it a second. Have another go. Clutch down. Good. Straight <laughs> down. Okay. Good. Now this time we're going to have a hand not on the top but slightly to this side. Okay. Keep the clutch down as well for us. You alright with that? Yeah. Good. So have your hand slightly to the side and you're going to move the crop or the gear lever across towards this side of the spring before you then push up into first. Okay. Have a go. Cross and up. There you go. Now keep the clutch down. To put it into second you have to keep the pressure across towards my right leg. Okay. So hand in that same position again. Push across towards my side. Slide it all the way down. That's second. Okay. Put it back in first again. Put it back in second again. You've got it. Take it out of gear. Neutral. Keep your foot on the clutch. Without looking, where's fifth and sixth and what hand position do you think you should use? That way and then put it down. Good. So, so which hand position, which side of the gear lever could you put your hand on? Because you want to put the pressure which way? Right way. So have it that side. Mm -hmm. So put your hand over the side. That way. Move it across to you. Move it up. That's five. Okay. And how do you keep it in sixth? <laughs> keep the pressure there and slide it all the way down. There you go. Put it in fifth again. Put it in sixth again. Was that six? Take it out of gear. Yeah, it was. You did well. Relax your um, pedal. So remember, third and fourth is in the middle. Okay. Fifth and sixth is your side. First and second is my side. Okay. All right with that? Yeah. Good. So what do we use first gear for? Going up. Uphill, yeah. Well done. Um, I know we had a little gab about that before. Um, what do we use fifth or sixth for? Going downhill. Downhill, actually not. Motorways. Motorways, okay. Okay, that's like the gear on a bike where your feet are going that sort of speed, but you're whizzing down the road. But you couldn't go uphill very easily in that gear, okay. could you? Make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's the same. And we use second, third, and fourth as our working gears, the ones that we're going to be using driving around towns. Okay with that? Second, third, and fourth. Yeah, they're okay. sort of like we call the working gears. Well, we're driving to and from mine to here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Um, reverse gear is obviously going backwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna have a quick go at putting it in reverse as well. So press the clutch all the way down. Nope. Oh, press the clutch. That's okay. You'll get used to it. Remember, press it yes. quickly. Yeah. Now keep the clutch down. I'm gonna show you first. I'm making this look so much easier than it actually is. People try and put it on an angle towards reverse. No, you push across and push across again, okay. and then up. Okay with that? Have a go. Push across and again. No, you're trying to go up too soon. Push across towards my finger and push across further again, harder. You won't break it, gone harder. There you go, now up. Get it? Mm -hmm. Take it out of gear and relax. Do you understand about it's really tough to get it into reverse, isn't it? Yeah. Why do you think that is? You can relax your clutch panel now as well. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. So people don't select reverse by mistake when they okay. put it into first. All right with that? Mm -hmm. You notice this come up on the dash, I saw that, so yeah. you're looking at it. To get rid of this uh, parking sensors um, display, you just give this little button a press, so give that a little press as well. All right with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So we're okay with the gears. Um, that'll do with that for now. I don't want to hang on that for too long because I'd like to try and get the car moving before we have to head back. So, last little thing before we go is uh, this thing. Any idea what that is? Handbrake. Good. Um, do you know how it works? Do you know how to operate it? Is this when the car stops it up wrong? Very good. Yeah, it's to hold us still. Exactly. Um, we're going to have a little practice at using it. What I'd like you to do though is press your brake pedal. Remember which foot you use your brake? Right one, try not to look, try and feel. Yep. Got it? Yep. Give it a little squeeze till you feel some good pressure. Right. Good, 
Well done. Hey. That one. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the accelerator. Yeah, this is and then the brake. brake. So give that brake a decent squeeze so you feel some pressure. We're now going to take the handbrake off. Do you know how to take it off? That button? You do, but before you press the button in, you need to lift slightly. Watch. Lift and the button goes okay. easily pressable. It's like on a, a ratchet and what you have to do is lift it up before you then release the button. Okay. So make sure your brake is squeezed and have a go at taking the handbrake off. So lift up, harder, button in now, now release, all the way down, good. Now to put it back on, any idea what you do? Take your foot off the brake? Definitely not because we'll roll, <laughs> won't um, we? Because yeah. it's only your foot brake that's holding us still at the minute because if you look up the car park we are on a hill, so we'll roll back into the bushes. We wouldn't, we'd hit the kerb first, but um, <laughs> keep your foot on the foot brake, okay? okay? That's why I'm covering mine in case you decide to take yours off. <laughs> okay. All right, so to put your handbrake back on, you press the button in, go on, you can do this now. Lift and hold hard, and even harder than that, tighter, and then let go of your thumb at the top. Now, good, relax. I don't think that's quite on enough, so the pressure that you actually need is a bit more than that. So forget the button, don't use that, just lift it up until you hear it click one more. There you go. So, did you feel that pressure that I just got you to put on that? Yeah. That's the type of pressure that you need okay. to hold the cursor. The what do you think? Will we roll? No. Any questions? No. No? Alright, super. Eventually, we'll need to do that without looking. Notice I'm being quite tough on you today to say, don't look at things, don't look at things. I know you were with that, but it's only this first lesson, so okay. no issues. Um, any questions? No. no. We're going to have a little go at starting the car and finishing off with a little bit of movement. Okay, we're going to try and get you finishing with a nice little move off and stop before we head back. Okay. All right, you don't need to be scared. We have jewels, we've got a clearish car park, um, so it's not a problem. We're going to get the car started first of all. Um, a lot of cars are going like this nowadays where they have and keyless starts, they are push button starts, but the keys do have to be in the car. I'm gonna get out of my pocket. There we go, we've got the key. They've got transponders in, the cars know that the keys are in the car. Okay. Okay, and if the key wasn't in the car, it wouldn't start, so they're pretty clever. Um, but if it was a car with a normal key, have you, do, you, do you know the process to start the car? Yeah, Put the key in, turn it, but before it turns, sometimes you have to take what we call the steering lock off, which is a device which locks the steering column, which really tries to prevent people from stealing the car, but honestly they're so easy to smash, it's untrue. The steering wheel's supposed to just keep the car going round so they couldn't just drive it, but they're a waste of space as far as I'm concerned a lot of the time. But to take them off, you have to turn the key and give the steering wheel a good old wiggle up and down and that takes the steering lock off and then that then the next turn of the key is the ignition on where we've got all the lights on like we've got now on your dashboard and the screen so that would be the next turn of the key to start the car from then it's a further turn you hear the engine start you let go of the key and it's spring loaded and it springs back towards that ignition position you following so I'm going to do it with this, so you'd go, key in, steering lock off, next turn, click usually ignition, next turn of the key, start, and it will then spring back to there. Okay. Okay? So it's much easier in this car. Okay. You just press a button. But before we do, we need to check two things. Is the handbrake on securely? Try it. Feel the pressure. Will it pull up anymore? Have a go. No, it's tight. Mm -hmm. Is it neutral? How do you check that? What did we say about neutral? What oh, you can spring it. Go, try it. We good with that? Yeah. So it's definitely neutral. Now to start this car, it's simple. You press your clutch. How quickly are you going to press it? Fast. Go for it. Good. And then press your start button once. Let go of your clutch. Relax, there's your car start. Okay. Easy enough? Okay. Do you need to know anything about the dials in front of you before we go? That's speed. Speed, good. Do you know what the other one is? Um, no. It's your rev counter. It shows you how fast your engine's working at in its simplest what form. Um, at the moment, where it is. Where yeah. it is at the moment is what's called idle. 
which is where the engine runs at its lowest point. Okay? If you came off the accelerator or gas pedal like I explained before, it would slow down to idle and then just carry on at that idle speed. Okay with that? Yeah. Good. In the lower gears, I'm not going to confuse you too much. Um, we're going to have a little go at using the pedals before we actually get the car off and going. Okay. What I'd like you to do first is get your right foot in the correct position with those two pedals. So do you feel as though you can press the brake and then pivot across and then fall to the gas pedal? There you go, you've already pressed yeah. it a little bit. Feel how sensitive that was as well. Yeah. Good. So your foot's in a good spot, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. With that gas pedal, what I'd like you to do yeah. is the accelerator. I call it the gas, yeah. is squeeze it at the thickness of a pound coin until you hear an engine note just rise a little bit. There you go, keep it like that. But rather than pressing it and leaving it, squeeze it and keep it, that's good. Excellent. And look at your rev counter now, it's just it's about one. Okay. So don't look at that now. Now squeeze a little more gas for me. Just listen to it, there it is. Now a little less gas. Keep pressing it. And now come off the gas. So it's quite sensitive, isn't it? Yeah. Agre agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, so we've got to be nice and gentle, that's why we're trying to use our ankle. The brake pedal, there's certain terms that I would use to help you control that. I might say cover the brake, or gently brake. If I said cover the brake, what do you think you'd do with your foot? Put your foot on the brake. But not Don't pressing. Don't press it, just, just put your foot on the brake. So cover the brake now? Yeah. Good. Now if I said gently brake, how much do you think you'd press it? Gently things with a pound coin again yeah. so give it a little squeeze you won't hear it now if you do more brake you'll start to feel more pressure do you yeah yeah good hold on if I said less brake there's less pressure and then if I said off the brake you just put your foot off it, off it and just over it again okay. do you understand okay so we're good with that we're now going to have a little go at the clutch pedal okay you know about pressing the clutch down we don't need to do that I'm just going to quickly show you the biting point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do stuff my side. So these override your pedals. So you've got the clutch. I've got the clutch and Pad brake pedal. Okay. I don't have an accelerator. Yeah. Okay. So if we go too fast, have a guess whose fault it is. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Second. So what I'm going to do is press this clutch down. So make sure your foot is back as it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want to break your toes. I'm going to press it down, and you'll be doing this in a second. You'll press it down. You'll put it into first gear mm -hmm. without looking, hopefully. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you'll slowly lift the clutch up, you'll slide your heel across the floor and it's around halfway, you'll feel a little, or you'll hear a little change, the car revs a little and that's this car pre-empting the car is near the, near, near the bite and you might need to move off. It's an anti-stall device in a lot of modern cars, whereas you lift the clutch up near the bite, if you haven't got any revs, it does it for you. Yeah. That's not a good tactic to teach you just to do it with a clutch because you'll get in another car and you won't be able to drive it. Okay, so we will be using a little bit of gas or acceleration before this point, but just for now, you lift the clutch, you hear the rev, and then you lift it a little more, and it's the biting point. Listen very carefully, I'm just going to do my window off. Do you hear the engine note change or the car even rock a bit? Listen. That's the bite. Yeah. Okay. And that's what you're going to do in a sec. And you need to find, you need to have your foot there all the time. No. That's just when you're starting to move off. Remember I said to you that you feed the you power in slowly. Okay. Yes. When you're moving off, when you stop, and when you're changing gear, and when you're maneuvering. Okay. So your turn. Press the clutch down. Try not to look at it. Well done. Not bad at all. Without looking into first well done good now just nice and relaxed slide your heel very slowly across the floor until you hear it rev good well done now lift it a little more and you'll feel the bite there it is feet still dip it down just with your ankle now just squeeze your ankle down the thickness of a pound good now lift it the thickness of a pound You can hear the engine change, can't you? Down a pound, up a pound. Quality. Press the clutch fully down. Good. Put it in neutral without looking. Yeah, 
feel the springs? Yeah. Good. Relax your feet. Good. We're now going to have a little go at just driving off. Okay. okay. All we do when we go, we use the little bit of gas, we use the bite, and we use our feet like a little pendulum as we move. So we'll get the car ready like we've just done, we'll press the clutch, we'll put it into first gear. We'll set a little bit of gas, so you'll hear the engine note. You'll lift and find the bite, so the car's ready to go. And then we'll have a little check around, and if it's clear, we'll release the handbrake, and then we use our feet like this. You use a little bit more gas and a little lift more bite when we travel about a car length. Then we lift the clutch fully up. And we'll be driving. We're just gonna aim straight up towards that nice black BMW up there. Okay. Right, we'll try and hit that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then to come to a stop, we'll come off the gas. Remember, will the car come to a sudden stop? No, no, it will just slow down, stay at idle. it will stay at idle, and then to slow slower than idle, we have to press the clutch to separate the plates, so we can then stop the car, but keep the engine running. Yeah. Then when we've done all that, we'll secure the car again with the handbrake, we'll put it back into neutral, and then we can relax our feet. Okay. I don't expect you to remember every single thing whatsoever, ever. Yeah. alright? I will tell you everything. Any questions? No. Let's finish off with a nice little move. Yeah. Okay. So, we prepare the car first, which is pressing which pedal? The clutch. Clutch. And then, down. Yep, yeah, good. Go for it. Well done. And then, what gear do you choose? Wicked. Keep the clutch down. Yeah. Good. Um, you can put your right hand on the steering wheel, nice and relaxed, and put your left hand even on the handbrake if you wish. So we're ready to release it. Now, Put your right foot in a position so it can go to the brake and the gas. Got it? Yeah. Pretty good. But we want the gas, we want a little bit of power. So squeeze the gas just until you hear the engine up. Try not to look, try not to look at your rev counter, just here. Have you got enough power? Yeah. A little bit more. Good. Keep it like that. Try not to look at it. Listening's easier, I promise you. Yeah. Now lift the clutch up until you feel that bite. Let me just get rid of that call. Okay, so now lift the clutch up to until you there. Feet still now. Don't move them. You've got it. Perfect. Really good. Just have a little look around using all your mirrors and have a look over your shoulders. Anyone walking the dog behind us? No. Are we all good? Just take your handbrake off. Remember a little lift up before the button. So lift up hard. Button in. Lift up hard first. There you go. Release the handbrake. Feet still. Don't move them need a little bit more power, hands on the wheel, and take your hands off, <laughs> alright, squeeze your right foot a little more so you've got a bit more power, that's fine, it's probably too much, don't look at it Aaron, listen, squeeze your gas so you've got a little bit of power, and just lift the clutch a little bit, it's a bit too much power, steer this way a little bit as well, you've done very well, there you go, now you can lift your foot off the clutch, and you're driving, okay. keep to the left a little bit, we're going to try and hit that black one, okay, now, come off the gas, Cars, okay. yeah, the car's at idle, so cover your clutch still and cover your brake, don't press either. Now we're going to press the clutch fully down, yeah. clutch all the way down, and use your brake lightly till you feel a little bit of pressure, a little power, feet still, don't move them, we've got to put the handbrake back on, well done, Is that, yes, nice tight pressure, well done, don't move your feet, what do you do with this, without looking, put back to nature. go for it, feel the spring, did you feel it, have a little bobble, there yeah. you go. Now relax your feet, good, the car shuts off, it is stop start, that's yeah. fine. One last little thing, take two hands off the wheel and put them like this, a bit closer, now clap. <laughs> Yay, you've driven. Okay. That was boss, that was very good. Have you got any questions on any anything there? No. No, is everything So there? you don't always have to have your foot on the clutch or the gas? No. Okay. It's picking the time to use them. Okay. okay. We needed power to go because the car is trying to be moved away. The engine's got a lot of work to, to, to work with because it's trying to move it over a ton worth of car and I'm sat in it as well. So it's got a little bit of work to do. So that's why we okay. use a little bit of power to move away. But then once we got it moved away, it's then strong enough to keep going. Okay. But then do you understand the part at the end where 
we have to then press the clutch back down before we stop, else the car's going to cut out and stall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Honestly, Aaron, that was excellent. Very good. That'll do. Is it? That'll do with that for today. Um, we're going to turn the car off. How do you think you do that? Um, that button. Go for it. And notice your rev counter will now go to off. Off. So we know it's off. What do you think you'll do before you get out with the seat? With the seat, hmm. move it back. Very good, that's very thoughtful, thank you. Because <laughs> you might not be able to fit in. Because I'm a big fat ass and a good show. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Um, all right, so we're done. Take your seat belt off, chuck your seat back, How and then. It? Is it the which, back hand or? No, which, which, which move the, the, the bottom part of the seat? Oh, this one down here. Good, so yeah, you can move that back. And before you get out, which hand do you think you're going to use to hold the this door? One. Yeah, and then where are you going to look before you get out, do you think? Back in the front this time. Yeah, good. Um, and does it really matter which way we walk around the car here? No, they're both the same. Because there's danger everywhere, so you just pick whichever you want to, but just keep an eye out for things. Um, any questions? Come on, let's swap. Thank you. Oh, ah, right. <laughs> it is, isn't it? So how do you unlock it? Do you remember? What did we do to check it before? Um, Which button did we press? I can't remember. That one. Wicked. <laughs> well done, Erin.